This morning we are cutting up a brood rearing mat out of an off cut of a piece of vinyl just from your carpet shop or flooring shop or whatever and what we're doing is this brood rearing mat also known as a BRM and uh, previously known as a winter mat and we've changed the name to a brood rearing mat so people um, were getting mixed up with winter meaning months of the year so they were going by a calendar rather than going by temperatures. So the easiest way to get one to size is to get your piece of vinyl and then to lay down an excluder of the required length and width. So this one here is a 10 frame excluder. And what you want to do is cut it to just inside the outer dimension of the excluder. So if you were going to make one for a nucleus hive, you would obviously use a four or five or six frame excluder and go on from there. This particular one here we're going to cut is a what we call a full size or 1985 version and uh, these days we use these mainly for hives that are a little bit on the weaker side when we need to place the brood rearing mat on. You definitely need to have the front slot cut as Alan's demonstrating here to allow for access and also to allow for ventilation and as simple as that this piece then gets placed underneath the excluder, not on top, as most uh, excluders are metal and they can draw moisture and cold. That gets placed in the brood chamber, and then as the weather starts to cool further, you can then add more to each super above, depending on the size of your hive and its requirements. Okay, an alternative material for your brood rearing mat is the Builder's Black Plastic. It's 200 UM in thickness, and it's the gear that is usually laid under concrete. And what you can do is to basically cut it to the same size as your requirements for, as your vinyl. Uh, the difference is here, being that this is generally a one-time use, so basically you use it through the cooler months. And then at the end, because it's a, a much cheaper and flimsier material, you can just throw that plastic out at the end. Um, and another thing that makes it a bit more difficult to use is that if you're trying to place it with a bit of a breeze that plastic can blow off the hive very quickly so um, it's a bit more a bit harder to, to handle with our vinyl brood rearing mats which is basically what we use now um, each each season at the end of each season they get irradiated and therefore they're right to go on any hive anywhere the season afterwards and all we've got to do is give them a quick clean by placing them in the sun and wiping off the wax and propolis that's been put on top. As you can see there, that does exactly the same effect because of the thickness and the weight of that material. But as you can see, if a, if a breeze was blowing and you've got a big triple hive with bees everywhere, it can be a bit difficult to place that on top. The black plastic was uh, used in 2000 and this one here was first, the vinyl one was first used in 1985 and um, because of the reusability of, of the vinyl uh, basically we just use the, the vinyl ones from now but we've done the black plastic ones to demonstrate if you've only got a couple of hives and don't want to have your brood mats lying around all season. 2006 this particular type of brood rearing mat was designed and the primary purpose of it here is you can see that it's smaller on the on the outer dimension and you can therefore use it on hives that are slightly stronger and um, require a bit more movement in between this one here as well you can use under the excluder and or in between supers or on top so if it gets quite cool and we want to keep the whole hive generating keeping that warmth in to save their energy then we'll place one of these between each supers and then one on top above the beetle trap you could see from the video here the difference in the dimensions.